Good evening, I'm Bob Baldacci, and welcome to Baldacci on Business. I am so pleased to introduce a whole new concept to our viewers tonight. This is our inaugural show called Pitch Me, and each month we will be uh, introducing a, a new entrepreneur who will present their business ideas and business plans to a very distinguished group of panelists. And, that, and our panel will have a chance to, uh, to offer consulting services and even invest if they so desire. So we're really excited uh, tonight to, uh, to introduce, first on my right, my right is uh, Carrie Galavan of uh, Chimani. And Kerry will be introducing and, uh, his new business, which is a mobile app for, for outdoor enthusiasts. And before Kerry has a chance, I really am pleased and proud to, to introduce our panel tonight. And on the end here, my good friend, Hugh Stevens. Hugh is the director of the Knowledge Transfer Alliance at the University of Maine. Thank you, Hugh, for, for agreeing to do this. Thank you. Elizabeth Baldacci, my partner in Baldacci Group, and Elizabeth has 18 years of sales and marketing experience and branding uh, development and uh, brings a terrific, uh, terrific uh, expertise to our panel. My very good friend, a new Maine resident, I've had him on the show before, he's known worldwide, Mr. F. Lee Bailey. Lee, thank you for being here tonight. And finally, Don Gooding. Don is the director of the Maine Center for Entrepreneurial Development, uh, is vice chair of the Maine Angels, and is an investor. In fact, all of these uh, panelists have invested and uh, could possibly invest in our company tonight. So thank you all for being here. Carrie, the floor is yours. Well, Tell us your... about Chimani. Sure. I'm the co-founder of Chimani. Chimani makes mobile apps specific for the outdoors. And our focus area right now is national parks and, and people visiting national parks. Now, the problem that we're presented with today is everyone loves national parks. But increasingly, people are wanting to use technology as part of their park experience. This is where Chimani comes in. We have over 280 million visitors per, day, per year visiting national parks. They spend $12 billion each year visiting those parks. Now, one out of three users have indicated in national park surveying that they wish to use technology as part of that, that experience. So there exists a tremendous opportunity, approximately 96 million user and visitors to the parks each year are starting to use technology as part of their experience. And this was based on a survey done in 2010. So things have only changed since then. So Chumani really, its, its basis is a mobile app. It is a mobile app which is available on all the major platforms. It presents benefits for visitors of three major areas. It allows them to plan their trips efficiently, it allows them to navigate while they're in the parks and allows them to socialize and experience their park visit both amongst the users there as well as their family back home. Now, the app itself has some essential features which we've really distinguished ourselves. It provides essential park information. It has high graphic maps which are designed specifically for the mobile platform and work offline without any cell phone connection and have a GPS-enabled functionality. It provides detailed information on all the activities that you'll find in a particular national park, like hiking, biking, or swimming. It provides key information on services that you find in national parks, parking locations, dining facilities, and the number one most requested feature, restroom locations. In fact, Chimani offers a clean restroom award for each of the national park apps because it's the number one most requested service. We also provide tools such as sunrise sunset data, title information if you're in a park like Acadia. You also have access to all of the complete ranger event schedules, something which isn't available unless you're on the National Park Service website. This is one of the unsold features of National Park Visits and one of the great resources. You also have convenient access to any of the shuttle bus information. And we do an estimate of when the next bus is arriving. Even though you don't have cell phone access, we can estimate when it arrives because overcrowding is still a tremendous issue in most of the national parks. We also provide a beautiful photo gallery as part of the experience. And then increasingly, we're starting to launch new tools such as an augmented reality viewer so that people can view through their camera 
and get added information as they're overlooking the Grand Canyon and get a wealth of information, not just what they're seeing in the signage in front of them. We also provide push notifications. These are breaking news alerts, such as trail closures, such as anniversary educational events, such as yesterday's, the alert was the 122nd anniversary of Yellowstone National Park, which happened to be my birthday as well. So it's a, a wealth of opportunities there. Now, Chimani was founded in 2010. We've had over 400,000 downloads since then. We have 20 products in the marketplace right now. We focus on the top eight national parks right now. We have a flagship app, which includes all of the national park units, and it was what we call a virtual passport. It allows people to record all their visits and develop a bucket list for which parks they want to go to next. We're available on all the major mobile device platforms. That includes the iPhone, the iPad, as well as any of the Android devices. Chimani is currently ranked number one for each of the individual parks for the iTunes App Store as well as the Google App Place. Each of these app stores have over 650,000 apps in them. And if you search for Acadia, Chimani comes up. If you search for Yosemite, Chimani comes up. And in fact, last week when Apple released the latest version of their operating system, they've redesigned the store. Not only Chimani comes up, but that's the only thing that comes up when you search for Yellowstone now. It's a beautiful opportunity, and we've already seen an increase in our downloads since last week as a result of that. Now, we've learned a lot since being in the marketplace since 2010. It seems like a long time with the app world. Well, one of the first things we learned is pay per download is not a viable business model. It really has been challenging to simply recover and generate revenue from simply getting a download from the user. Also, free is king. People are wanting content for free. This seems to be a carryover from the world of the web. Also, what we're finding is that, that the, the app place is a very immature marketplace. What works in retail does not necessarily translate into a virtual marketplace such as this. So what we've had to do is we've had to change our, our revenue model. We started with a pay per download. We started at a premium price point of $9.99 per download. We saw from 2010, we saw a 300 increase in sales in 2011, but simply not enough in terms of trying to demonstrate a viable business. So we changed and we looked for other ways to generate revenue. So what we've done now is we've created in-app subscriptions. So now it's not a single download purchase, it's a subscription model, reoccurring revenue. So for $1.99, you get a subscription to all the critical services that are most relevant when you're in the park. Otherwise, you can download the app for free and use it as much as you want. But if you're going to the park, you get offline maps, you get the ranger event schedules. And so to allow to capture the market, still get exposure, but just for those folks who are actually going to the parks. We also have opened up the apps to local businesses. From the get-go, we've always focused on services provided by the National Park Service, not commercial vendors. And they've been asking to get on our platform. We've now allowed them. So the gateway communities of Bar Harbor, all the gateway communities around Yosemite and Yellowstone, we're now offering this as a platform to advertise for them. Then lastly, our model has changed to allow for major brands who already identify the National Park demographic as an important demographic that they want to market to. In a sponsorship model, which runs weekly, allow them to get brand exposure within the app across the entire platform. So we think these changes are going to demonstrate in a, in a more viable business model. And I, the strategy going forward for us, from the get-go, we've always distinguished ourselves from the other folks on the landscape by making an innovative product, starting from mobile first always keeping that perspective, designing a product that's meant to be designed and used in the outdoors. And that's where we're going to continue to innovate and distinguish ourselves. We're in an excellent position with regards to market. And so right now, we need expertise to really develop ourselves and to really mature as a company. We're looking for talent, and this is my pitch to you. We're looking for talent, and we're looking for really folks to help us develop uh, equity partner relationships and to really help mature the, the company and take it to the next stage.
that's excellent. Panel, it's all yours. Fire away, Elizabeth. What are your sales? Sales today, so uh, the 2010, it was simply $1,500. Okay. And then 2011, it jumped up to $16,000 in downloads as sales. And then for the last summer, we made a strategic move to simply make the app completely free. So as to gain market position to secure that. And now we're rolling out the changes in the subscription model right. over the course of the winter time now that we've secured our position in the marketplace. And are you finding that people are downloading those specialty apps within the app? Are you finding people are paying $199 for the Ranger services? Is that working? We've just started to pivot that. We wanted okay. to wait until the, the okay. season was over to roll that out. Okay. We've gotten exposure with, without any advertising. We've already had brands sign up for the advertising. Uh, for the local advertising and we've aggressively gone after brands at the larger market level. In fact, next week we're sponsoring an outdoor industry conference to really start getting exposure to larger outdoor brands. Okay. Yes. On. So do you have on the back end sort of systems to make it easy for these local gateway communities to sort of you know, put in their own information or is it labor intensive to bring them on as advertisers? Right now we don't have a web-based form, but that's certainly as we ramp up, we would do that. Uh, but right now it's essentially providing, uh, we have a basic format that we reach out to them and we work with them to provide the media that we would then put onto the system. We have a back-end content management system which we manage all the apps with. So the updating of the apps is very seamless, whether it be the Ranger events, the push notifications, or content updates such as that. Panel? I'm going to ask a couple boring questions, but tell me a little about who is we when you who? say we. Sure. Myself and my co-founder, mm -hmm. Sean Meredith. Sean Meredith has a uh, graduate of MIT. He's been the primary technical programmer of the app. Um, he's worked uh, actually in the state of Maine. He worked as Apple rolling out the uh, laptop initiative. Mm -hmm. And so he's been the partner uh, with myself in really developing this part platform from the very start. Thank you. Sure. I also know, Carrie, from what you've told me previously that you've invested a significant amount of money right. uh, from family and friends up to this point uh, yeah. to bring it to, to this level. Lee. If you're looking for equity and it <coughs> smells like you are, <laughs> uh, how much do you want and what are you going to do with it? Well, um, uh, I'm right now looking for consulting services to help define that point right there. Um, we've done projections based on uh, really how much we estimate each of those revenue streams are going to generate and what are the resources, capital, the, the resources needed in order to bring us there and then projecting when is the crossover line and two profitability. And so we're now framing that conversation, but we would like expertise to help us shape that, that conversation moving forward with potential equity partners. By the way, I noticed as a footnote that your partner has flown as a pilot a yes. supersonic airplane yes. and operated the reactor in an atomic submarine. Correct. I can match him on the first, but how did he get to do the submarine? <laughs> <laughs> well, if, if Sean were here, he... Uh, Originally was in the Air Force Academy, uh, went on to MIT, and then moved on to the Navy to coming out of MIT as a nuclear engineer and spent his time on a submarine working as a nuclear engineer. Sounds so a it, little bit like George Plimpton. <laughs> <laughs> He's a former fighter pilot. Yes, and, sir. <laughs> uh, and go ahead, Elizabeth. I have a question on the technology sure. side. So you're saying that you don't need your cell service in order to get this app, but you're also saying you get live updates as to what's going on sure. in the park. How do, sure. how do you receive those? So we've engineered a product so that whenever there's even the slightest signal, it downloads as much information as it can. So a lot of the parks around Gateway, around the key locations like Old Faithful, AT&T, Verizon have a signal right there, but okay. it only covers that area and it's very saturated. So the product is designed to give you just the most important information. A push notification is almost like an email message, very small amount of a text which is sent over the wire. So we've really tried to design it so that to take advantage whenever there is access, yeah. but to assume that there isn't. Yeah. Donald. Um, what does your cost of customer acquisition look like? I probably putting it in the App Store doesn't cost you anything, but are you also trying to do things like Google AdWords or any other things to try to drive people yeah. to the app? The, the largest cost right now is we've, we've actually focused on traditional marketing through, oddly enough, rack cards. 
This has been probably one of the most effective mediums. We've distributed over 85. What's a rack card? A rack card is essentially a, a small brochure about this size, and you would see them in a large assortment of brochures. Someone picks it up. And so that we've distributed over 85,000. Every single one of them has been picked up in all central California, all around you know, uh, Yosemite. That has been the single one most effective way to drive traffic because people are en route. So that's been our main advertising cost with regards to that after doing the programming. Uh, the other uh, cost associated with that is simply the innovations with the product and taking user feedback and developing the, the, the product. Excellent. Yeah, where are you in your uh, organizational process as far as the planning process? How detailed are you? Um, you know, midstream, are you at the end? Are you uh, business are, planning yes, process? Please. Business planning is midstream. We've just done projections based on our recent revenue pivoting for mm -hmm. revenue. Uh, in terms of a product roadmap, we have a clear product roadmap and where we need to evolve. And also looking at other opportunities, whether it be the larger outdoor space as well as international parks and just the range of other parks that are still available within the U.S. Any need for um, uh, protection, you know, legal, uh, maybe you know, patenting or trademarked. I mean, is that all? Good question. We've uh, been doing, we've already established trademarking patenting. We're, and we, it's worth looking at to see mm -hmm. if there are any patent opportunities. We've already received counsel along the ways of actually taking advantage of the main patent program yeah. and working with the folks over there to assist yeah. with that. Nice. Mm -hmm. Elizabeth. You mentioned that you're pivoting to a recurring revenue model yes. um, where it's $1.99 to download these apps within the park. Is that a one-time $1.99 or is it $1.99 per month? It's a $1.99 that gives you a 12-month subscription. A 12-month subscription. Okay, so yeah. then you're re it is recurring, but it, it ends after a year. So are you really looking to sort of refresh those users as they maybe go on to a different park and download more things for a year? But the market is big enough that enough new people are coming into the parks that you feel that this is a sustaining model? We feel with the combination of providing a core set of tools, which we call the Chimani Travel Kit, yeah. but then starting to augment up other tools around that, which are based on either a subscription model or a paper download. For example, this augmented reality feature that I talked about, that would be a separate cost download. That would be $199 as well if you wanted to get this camera which would allow you to view that information. Okay. And then we have a range of other products that we've evolved which we can really build out a store if you will. But the base reoccurring revenue in that context would still be that subscription travel kit. Yes. You've indicated that because reception is so poor in many parts you download maps to memory and bring them up that way. But you also said you have GPS tracking. Yes. How do you match the two if you're not getting a map signal? Sure. So the maps are actually geo-referenced. And so the GPS is talking to the satellite. So unless you're in some of the slot canyons like in Zion and you don't have good uh, triangulation with the GPS, then the actual indicator is overlaid on top of the maps and gives you an accurate location. Um, so um, even though they're, they're pre-downloaded, all the mapping data has been geo-referenced to coordinate with the GPS. Good question. Supposing you uh, begin to take off like a rocket yep. and DeLorme up the road decides to get in the business with their distribution, their name, and so forth, mm -hmm. how would you deal with that? Well, I think we offer a competitive, a better, a more competitive product because I think we've already established ourselves within the National Park. We have already established a brand. I think our approach uh, DeLorme's, uh, my assessment of them is they're very device centric. We've really tried to keep uh, device agnostic and really try and develop what for the device which most consumers are really using and so not having to focus too much on building out a device. Focusing on the software and making sure that's available on the most strategic devices. I think that DeLorme's focus on the GPS market and their focus on more of a, um, as I would say, more of an elite outdoor athlete, athlete is slightly different than our marketplace. The National Geographic demographic is, is what I like to call windshield tourists. These are folks that go less than a mile away from their vehicle when they're in most national parks. And so they are an ideal casual type of visitor to the parks. And that's why an iPad or an iPhone is the best platform to develop for. So. Elizabeth? This is a, the app world and the tech world is a, is a really fast moving space. Um, I have two questions for you. Sure. One, who else is in this space? Who do you see as your primary competition? Sure. And, and two, what is your exit strategy? What sure. Kind of so the primary competition right now, amazingly enough, is National Geographic. And okay. even they are, 
I would say, a, not a direct competition. Their approach has been to create a single app and then to bundle all the parks. There are real technical limitations of that approach. But they have the name, and they've been able to get exposure through Apple. Mm -hmm. Now, we've already outpaced ourselves with a lot of the smaller developers. No one has been able to actually establish their brand and create products across the range of top visited parks. There have been a handful of developers who are out there doing one or two parks, but no one's been able to establish this across. And I think that was one of our key strategy moves this summer was to keep it uh, free and really drive the competitors because they were trying to nickel and dime everyone, but we were keeping it free and we had the best product out there. And so we've really gained a lot of ground with regards to that. Um, could you, and I'm sorry, the second question. Exit, exit, strategy. <laughs> exit strategy. Exit strategy. I think that this is a real, A, I want to create a viable business here in Maine. That's most important. And B, I think the business can really has room to evolve. The larger outdoor market, recent study that was done, it's over, it's generating 64, well over $64 billion in, uh, in revenue each year. There is larger rooms beyond just national parks. So I think that is uh, a marketplace that it can evolve to. And I think there's a whole range of portfolio of, of applications that can be rolled out. We've just been talking about national parks, but we want to take a lot of what we've learned in that experience and then start to apply it to a larger market. So A, I think there's growth of the company, but also I think there are a lot of opportunities where larger brands, for example, you see Google going out getting Fromers. Right. They said they were never going to get into the content business. They're in the content business right now. Oddly enough, BBC bought Lonely Planet, you right. know, which was a strange move. But I think there also is potential opportunities now. We want to focus a lot on maps, developing high quality maps. Uh, I was really nervous when Apple was replacing Google Maps, mm -hmm. but I think they've shot themselves in the foot and they realized that maps are really hard and I'm wondering if they even want to stay in that business. So, right. Right. Great Good. questions. Uh, yeah. Well, let me ask the panel at this point, what's your reaction to the, uh, the uh, opportunity that, uh, that Kerry has presented uh, in terms of, obviously he's not looking for investors at this point in time, but he's looking for some help, consulting help. But, so fire away. I'll Any start. interest? Uh, my program is a or very organizational centric program. And that would be my one question to you is, um, it, it's very appealing, very attractive to you know, me, who's not very uh, He was with the University of Maine. Thank you. Um, but my, my one question would be. We is, only have five minutes left, so I want On the top side, where, where, what do you need internally? Um, not just money, but human resource. What, what, in order for you to expand into new markets, new places, what do you need internally? We, see, we need a small sales force. Mm -hmm. you know, in terms of programming, we have it mapped out so that we can bring on some, some more junior programming, but in terms of core programming, we're all good between myself and the co-founder, Sean Meredith. Excellent. Yeah. Elizabeth, your reaction? Well, I'd like to work with you. Our consulting group offers business plans. We have um, about 10 affiliated consultants that can help you put together a decent business plan and help with those uh, forecasts. I'm also on the board of Maine Angels, which is a group of about 45 individuals that invest in private companies. Once we get a business plan together for you and you, you kind of fine tune and figure out what your needs are and how you're going to, what your sources and uses are, uh, I'd like to bring you to that group to present and, um, and start, start with a capital raise. So. Good. If the Apple faces up to the fact that they're not cartographers <laughs> and tries to buy your company, uh, which would be very difficult to patent, I, I want to point out, mm -hmm. I take it you would sell. Mm. Yes. <laughs> so uh, the MCED Top Gun program, I think, will make a lot of sense for you. Uh, that'll be starting in January, uh, as I think you know. And we're also offering, uh, on October 24th, a program called Equity Prep to help entrepreneurs like you to get ready for the main angels. We're also going to have a pitch night on uh, uh, November 14th, and you've done a great job tonight. I thought so. so. Um, Terrific. I, yes. my, my one caveat is uh, I'm still thinking you're going to have a, do a couple more pivots on doing a, a real revenue model here. And I think until you get then to that point, you're not going to be ready to go out for a, a larger angel investment round. Mm -hmm. Good point. I know, uh, Hugh, I don't want to speak for the Knowledge Transfer Alliance program at the university, but you do have available business students and faculty that might be able to help uh, somebody like uh, Absolutely. Carrie with, uh, with, some, with some numbers and financial Absolutely. forecasts. So you have clearly some interest here, and uh, how would 
How would you like to proceed? I mean, you've, you've got uh, an indication from uh, Maine Center for Entrepreneurial Development, Sales and Marketing, and the University of Maine. And Lee uh, has incredible contacts and resources uh, at the appropriate time. So I don't want to speak for you, Lee, but... Mm. Can Carrie, I take them all? <laughs> <laughs> we, should, we should go with one deal lead, uh, somebody that, that, you can, that you can develop a relationship with, knowing that, that uh, clearly you've got other resources here. I wasn't clear whether, whether Lee was interested in, in doing that or not, though. He wasn't. I don't want to speak well, for I'm, Lee. I'm glad to see the young man. Uh, echoes Nick Gecko. He's agreed is good. He wants them <laughs> 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 all. Right, well, well, on that note, I think um, I'm aware. We only aware, have a minute left. Okay, so. I'm aware of the Top Gun program, and and that was already on my radar screen in the workshops. Wonderful opportunity and the work that Don's doing. Um, uh, Maine Angels has been on my radar screen. Um, as a potential avenue. So I think I'm going to make the request to work with Elizabeth. Do okay. I just get one choice? Yes, you do. All right. Then. And then Elizabeth <laughs> will you. pull everybody together. But <laughs> Carrie, thank you very much. Uh, you. This has been, this is our first show. We, uh, we're really excited to, to have you on. You did a terrific job, thank terrific you. job. And uh, panelists, thank you for your time and effort. Uh, this, this was great. Uh, I hope to the viewers out there, I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, this has been fun for me, and I think educational for, for all of you who are thinking of uh, starting a business or investing in a business. So each month we're going to introduce a new entrepreneur. And next month it's going to be Brian Crowder, who has a very interesting product uh, involving uh, hydration, if you will. Uh, but Brian will be uh, coming in. And uh, again, thank you all for, uh, for, for tuning in tonight. And uh, thank you guys very thank much. You. Thank you. Excellent.